Hi and welcome back. Sterling Moss, legend of the track, is one of our regular contributors to the Men and Motors channel. Let's join him and Mike Rutherford again in conversation in Sterling's private study. Mike asked him whether he thought it would be a fairer system if road tax was abolished and replaced by a further tax on fuel. I wouldn't want to because I think if we did that it would probably cause inflation or, or push up the price of goods and so on. Uh, unless you bring in two levels of petrol and you have, you know, for trucks, they don't, they, you know, like we had during the war with blue fuel or something. Mm. Um, so I don't know that I would, actually. Mm. I think it, it, it's a good thought because, after all, the people who should really pay the most money are those who wear the road, roads out quickest, mm. you know. But having said that, I, don't, I think it would be in, bad for the economy, probably. Yeah. It just seems a bit archaic that in 1996 we still have this practice where you go to the post office or you send off this little disc and you tear it out and you put it on your windscreen and this proves you're paying your road fund line and of course the other problem is that it's open to fraud enormously whereas if you put that tax on fuel yeah then you eliminate fraud, fraud overnight. Yeah. I can see the benefits but I, but I think probably if you spoke to an economist or somebody they, they could prove to you or to me that it really wouldn't, wasn't the way to go. Mm. I'm surprised actually that, that there are different stages or levels of, it, of taxation for cars. What would you do with somebody if you caught them without that insurance disc on their windscreen? I mean, how serious an offence is I that? I think it's. I think one has to look at it in the worst way. I think it's terribly in, in, important. Myself, I really do, because you have to look at it in the way that if they hit a child or a grown up or yep. what have you and cause them really bad damage, who's going to pay for the for what what the, you know the their 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 hospitalisation and whatever things they need? So I think I think it is terribly important. The other disc that you often don't like on windscreens is that nice bright orange disabled disc. Tell me why. I, I feel very strongly about this because I, I feel that people who are truly disabled deserve to be able to park more or less where they need to. But I personally also know of people who use their mother or their aunt's car and use it when they shouldn't do so. So I think, I think that we should, the disabled permit should have the person to whom it applies, a picture of them, so you can say, well, is that person in the car? That's the first thing. I think it should have the name of the doctor who said this person is disabled, because quite often you see people who are not disabled. Now, mm. maybe they have some heart murmur or something, but I would like to know. Mm. And, and, and I do know so much abuse of it. And, and uh, of course, it's probably not as bad here as it is in America, where mm. you get all these disabled uh, mm. places they can park. But uh, I think it is something that ought to be, ought to be looked at. And I'm sure you'll just clarify this point before all the letters and phone calls come in. You're not suggesting for one moment that people who deserve the orange badge, the disabled badge, shouldn't get them. Oh, You're no, 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 I think they should. Absolutely. I'm absolutely for it. I mean, I have had a disabled permit before when I've been, when I've been disabled, or when I've had a shunt, mm. and, I'm, and I'm not capable. You know? Oh, quite. When you... I, and I think it's OK. I think you should be able to have one yeah. when you really need it. Yeah. But what I hate to see is, is somebody using it who has right. not, hasn't got the right. By their very nature, those orange discs go to elder, elderly people. Uh, are we allowed to say elderly in these politically correct days? Um, yes, I'm getting days? on, yes. Uh, well, you're a pensioner yourself, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yes, I am. Um, I, I know what you're going to say. Should we should be tested? Yes, I suppose we should. Uh, I'm not the person to say it because I did t I've taken one driving test and because I did something that wasn't correct on... Oh, I forget what it was now, but anyway. Oh, yes, I wasn't going quick enough on the motorway or something. <laughs> Um, that was said, your first he, test? Yeah, my first test except for a motorbike, yes. In what year was that? Well, you, now, just recently. Oh, okay. Because you didn't have to, if you've had a license since 1945, you don't have to, which is ridiculous, because you don't have to take a driving test, you know. Because in 45 you didn't need them and therefore you've got user rights. But uh, do I think people, older people, I think yes they should. I think I think it's only realistic that they should uh, be appraised uh, and reappraised. I don't mean necessarily every year, but I think probably when you're a pensioner you ought to have it maybe every, every other year or every two or three years. Because one needs to know the different road, road arrangements and also the, how competent that person is.